curious of pace because you, you've done the, I mean, you've had a major initiative to get the whole community involved in how you did it. I mean, was it did, were, were the requirements from top down to faculty that they had to? No, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, it's you know, it's been it's been we've had mixed success. This yeah. year we had a, um, a big step forward though because um, the portfolio became required for um, all first year students in through University One of One. And that was a big hurdle that we've been, you know, <laughs> um, it made so much sense to us, the people in the new portfolio world, and yet we had a lot of resistance. But with the start of this new initiative called the Pace Path, um, designed to get students, um, you know, uh, enhancing their educational experience by participating in co-curricular activities and seeking out advising and mentoring and networking, um, that all became packaged in this Pace Path. Um, and ePortfolio luckily became tool to manage that. So I was thrilled um, because this is it's like a huge win for me because now all the students will at least start with ePortfolio and even though it will be a mixed bag from course to course beyond that, whether faculty are using it or not, it's done because they're introduced to this from the beginning and some of the students take off with it on their own. Some of them will use it for leadership development or for career development and then they'll hit some courses that will have it. So even though it's not like I'm living the dream that they're using it in every course, it's still like a lot of the hard work of banging on doors in the beginning is over because it's now just part of the culture. It's part of their tool set. Um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing even stronger growth from here because all the students will start their PACE experience with it and will hopefully connect with ePortfolio in one of those ways um, beyond that first year course. Is that introduced in a course? Yeah, it's introduced through University 101, which is a, a freshman seminar course. And again, the way it's introduced is probably mixed depending on the faculty member, to be honest. Um, but we're taking the approach, um, like you were mentioning, George, where uh, the, the University 101 <coughs> students have a peer mentor. So we're trying to put the burden of teaching ePortfolio on that peer mentor who takes to it a little more readily and relieve the faculty member of going over the technical aspects of how you upload a file and change permissions. Um, so there's a template page. I wasn't going to show that today, actually. I was going to, but I, can't, I could show that today. Um, oh, I thought that was your topic. For oh, well, I would think I'm talking about tenure and promotion, but I could show the template that we're using for um, students as well, if people oh, want to look at it. Um, and it's not, it's not the, um, the template itself is not the most dynamic thing. Um, it's not, you know, the greatest e-portfolio, but at least it gets the students in there similar to the TAP approach. You get them in with a template that's pretty easy to use, and then hopefully they take to it and see other students using e-portfolio in more oh, dynamic oh, 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 not, uh, not this year, but last year, our first year seminar was going to include a portfolio component. So I did create some help materials for the HARO. But what was decided for the portfolios was so minimal that really using the portfolio system for the first year seminar portfolio was so much overkill that students, I'm sure, left the situation thinking, I need to learn that system just to write these four paragraph reflections. You know? And so I, I, I feel like we might have done more damage to portfolios on their purchase than good by this implementation that was not well thought out um, by the people who were behind the program, unfortunately. At Pratt, we did, um, I was recently there for several years, and we had a very active portfolio going on in one school of Pratt and they influenced another school and converted, they had a great template that um, kind of looked at every branch of value learning, it's like the different, the different outcomes you might get to. And um, the foundation department translated that into their template made it in art and art history and English so that every foundation student, which means in an art school, you start out with foundation. So you, every student who comes through foundation had to do an e-portfolio. That meant 
we had to train all the faculty members to work with the ePortfolio. And those students, that was a huge win for us because those students are going to go on, every single student is going to go on and ask their sophomore professors, where's, where's our ePortfolio assignment for this class? And so that's, that was an initiative that started a year and a half ago, and it's going along. It's apparently taking, you know, having a success, and people are going forward with it. So a lot of, a lot of people are being pulled in, and now they need to be trained in the upper, in the upper years for how to deal with it. Oh. Yeah, I know. There it is! <laughs> I haven't seen it in, in Got six all her files months. organized. That's, yeah. So they started, this is the, the, um, the e-portfolio from the um, ESL point of view, and this was their accuracy, listening, speaking, reading, and now they had converted their, their templates, so um, since 2010 we have, uh, Catalyst made us a fantastic new template, and um, that has uh, uh, those uh, categories along the top. Well, it was very easy for Foundation to then take it over and put their categories in, put art history, English, um, and uh, each one of the classes that a Foundation student would take. And then the sculpture teacher, the art history teacher, the English teacher could all look at each other's yeah, there's, this is the converted one. This is the, the, and the converted ESL one. And then in foundation, what they could do is have each faculty member from each division of foundation look at, it, at the students working. And so the sculpture person would know what was going on in English, and the English person would know what was going on in, in drawing. And you could really get a view of the whole Oh, thank you, Christine. <laughs> Do you want to briefly talk about Pace Park? Uh, since, sure. since we have it up here? Yeah, since we have it up, I mean, that's fine. This, um, this is just the, the, the outline for the template, so not an actual student one. But um, again, I feel like this was a big win for our ePortfolio project because we're driving all of our first year students into ePortfolio. And, um, Hopefully, hopefully, um, you know, planting the seed about the value of ePortfolio um, from the from the beginning, and I think it's going to make it much easier later on for other faculty to use it. With you were, you were mentioning, faculty don't want to take on the burden of maybe teaching the technology, um, but yet maybe would use it. Um, so this, combined with requiring ePortfolios for tenure and promotion, is kind of all of our new students are introduced to it and need to use it. All of our new faculty are introduced to it and need to use it. So it's just setting up a, a great scenario for, um, although we don't have the top down saying every program's got to use a portfolio, we had these two key points where everyone is using it and hopefully we'll create an even stronger portfolio culture than we have now. So, so all, all freshmen do University 101? All freshmen need to do University 101. So, you know, we're, we don't have a way to get to transfer students yet, so they're, they're not getting to it. Um, but, again, this is huge, um, and hopefully this will just continue to grow. And even a, a lot of our grad programs have voluntarily taken the portfolio. I think our grad students tend to be more career motivated anyway. They already have artifacts from work experience or professional experience that they are ready to share. So um, I've been pleasantly surprised that a lot of the grad programs seem to have embraced ePortfolio. Uh, still more work to do. <laughs> but we're in our fifth year of a university-wide ePortfolio project with Mahara. And um, I think we're, you know, we're, we're at a good point. <laughs> yeah. We've had good success, you know, like with your tech fellows, our e-turns have been really key to all of these you know, little projects, tenure promotion, pace path work. Um, we definitely wouldn't be where we where we are without the students um, both working side by side with the faculty, um, inspiring others to make better portfolios, helping us get through the upgrades, figure out the new features, and even just the their, you know, how they see portfolio. You know, they sort of, you know, I have one idea about it, but the student takes me two steps further and 
kind of how I think about what could be done with the portfolio. So I think George, you're so smart and working with, <laughs> with the tech fellows here, and I definitely recommend to other institutions any way you can get students involved in a project is just going to make a stronger project. The, the E-turns and the tech fellows, um, I mean, did you have E-turns in uh, academic technologies before that you kind of repurposed for e-portfolio work? The, e the tech fellows, is that those, those were started specifically for the e-portfolio? Yeah, and then, then we, we had a, a PT3 grant, preparing to our CCS technology grant, and that actually continued after this sort of e after the accreditation process, and it continued to support the, the tech fellow program then. Up to the up to the current. I'm just trying to figure out where it would carve out money for new student support and yeah. Anyway, because I, I think for us, what happened was that during that period of e-portfolio push, yeah, um, the faculty got used to having a local you know student that they could go to and ask questions of, and they and they went to the administration and said, "Don't take my tech fellow away." So so the fund, the program has continued to be funded. I think it's hard. We um, luckily we were involved in a couple of grants early on in our uphill <laughs> climb with the portfolio, and we specifically used funding to hire. Even though we've had students in IT and, and working, you know, student tech mentors along the way, we specifically carved out this money from these early grants to pay um, some better students a little more than we pay the typical student. Um, so we pay our e-turns $10 an hour, which is a little bit more than our other students. We gave them a little more prestige. We branded them as e-turns. And initially, they were solely dedicated to e-portfolio. But in full disclosure, they're doing a lot more now, you know, with all the other tech, tech tools. But I think in the early days, it really helped to have them really tied primarily to e-portfolio. It created a buzz about it, even giving them the name e-turn or tech fellow. I, I don't know. I think it just created some excitement around it. And um, faculty felt pretty privileged if they had an intern assigned to them. They were part of our teaching circles in the early days. We had uh, over over a period of three years, we trained over 100 faculty through teaching circles that met. Um, it was a year commitment. They had meetings, um, both group and with their interns, for a full semester. And then the commitment on their part was to use e-portfolios in at least one of their classes in the spring. Again, with that sustained intern support. So those things coupled together, the e-turns with the teaching circle faculty development, really helped to create um, uh, just a, a more welcoming climate for e-portfolio. And as I was telling Natalie yesterday, I feel in the, you know, the first few years I was spending so much time explaining what is an e-portfolio, and now I feel like I can spend more time talking about the whys and the hows, but I don't have to define what it is anymore. You know, people have heard, people have heard me say it enough. And I think that's where you want to get to, right? You want to get to the point where people know what it is, and then you're able to talk a little bit more about why they should use it and how they should use it, but not have to explain from the ground up, because you, they've seen it in some of the early places. That's funny. On the ABLE list now with Trent, Trent Batson's blog, is yeah. he's really been focusing on trying to get a group together to really, you know, wait, what is ePortfolio? It's an interesting yes. discussion. Yes, I, did. I was just talking about that with Christina or Natalie, I forget who were this week, yes. his recent one about the future of e portfolios. Right. Yeah. yeah, everyone's trying to figure figure it out. What's coming next? He's a good one to watch for kind of a future future vision of e portfolios. We're having space learning. Yeah. Yes. 